Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, so we have Thomas Weinberger from Austria. Uh, he's actually the head web uh, marketing person. Well, Thomas, what would you call yourself? <laughs> uh, tech savvy guy, probably. Hi, everybody. This is Thomas from Trotec Austria. Um, for Trotec, I'm responsible for the websites, online marketing, and SEO. It's also my, my uh, personal passion. And I hope I can show you some tricks of the trade today here in this webinar. Perfect. Thanks, Thomas. So we're actually very lucky to have Thomas. Uh, he was nice enough nice enough to join us <laughs> and we can uh, start with the presentation so i'm going to uh share my screen here and if uh, if anybody has any questions we'll try to answer them according to as they come in uh i might interrupt thomas as he's speaking i might you know give my two cents or if uh, there's a question i might actually uh, ask him that question so what Thomas and I wanted to do in this uh, sort of webinar, I, I know lots of our, our customers, um, laser customers, they're uh, either home businesses or small businesses or even medium-sized firms uh, that do their own marketing. Uh, they either hire, uh, you know, additional marketing services from what we gather from the, the, the sort of the registration forms that, that came in. Um, but we wanted to sort of share our experience and knowledge in terms of, uh, the basics of, of online marketing and uh, what uh, how online marketing can help your business specifically uh, targeted towards um, the the website and and you know the tools that you'll need so Thomas if you want to just sort of talk about what we'll cover for the webinar sure um, okay then I'll start off with okay. slide number one um, mm -hmm. Why is the website your strongest marketing tool? So this slide covers the reason why we're doing this webinar. You can estimate uh, that two thirds of all inquiries will be coming in through your website once you've set it up properly and you've optimized it for SEO. It is the strongest marketing tool because once you set it up, it will continuously generate inquiries for you. This means there will be a lot of effort in the first phase, in the setup phase, but afterwards, um, you only maintain it to a certain degree. That means updating it regularly. Um, to sum it up, we use the phrase, it delivers best bang for your buck. Uh, there are and virtually no, sorry? So, sorry, Thomas, so so just on. to add, I mean, uh, in terms of our marketing efforts, uh, we rely the majority uh, of our marketing efforts on, on the website and, and obviously online traffic. But uh, would you agree with that? I mean, most, most of the marketing we do is uh, for and from the website. Absolutely. Um, in, in the marketing industry in the last 10 years, there was a big shift from companies directly contacting customers to the other way around. So the strongest tools you have will allow customers to search for you when, when the customers uh, are in the right mood or, or when they have the time to do that. And the tools that are directly contacting the customers are getting weaker and weaker. Uh, you, certainly everybody knows that you've got a full mailbox um, you you uh, subscribe to several newsletters but you don't look at all the newsletters or all the the emails the ad emails are coming in all the time um, it's much more important to be available for the questions of your customers when they are searching for something it's a much stronger tool um, this is the reason why the website always will be a stronger tool than all the other ones you have in your set yeah, and, um, and later on we'll talk about you know the the cost of setting up a website and uh, the sort of the, the the tips that you you should know about um, about sort of avoiding uh, you know overpaying or you know what you need to, to to do to have a good hosting and domain. So, but that's that's later on. Mm -hmm. um, the term for this uh, that customers are coming to you that these tools. Uh, that providing information has gotten much stronger than uh, pushing out information via ads and marketing. That's called pull marketing. So to give it a more theoretical background. Um, I'll jump back one step. We, we've mentioned it before, best bang for your buck. What does that mean? You can expect to get $100 return uh, for every single dollar you invest to underline this mes message a bit with figures. Um, and an outlook for the slides to come. What are the three most important parts for having a good website, three keys to success? Number one is providing content or information that is relevant to your customers. 
if they find on your website what they're looking for, then uh, your chances for selling are much higher. The second point is always update your website and make sure that it has a fresh, up-to-date look. We've seen uh, when, when, we, when we take a look at websites from engraving businesses, we've seen hundreds of websites where you can clearly tell, even if you're no professional, that this website hasn't been updated or changed in the last three years. Um, and, uh, so Thomas, it's, you, you also yeah. mentioned before that, uh, you know, imagine if you go on a website and it only mm -hmm. has a uh, text without any images or it looks old. I mean, it's not going to yeah. be very trustworthy. Uh, and so how how often would you recommend? Um, I mean, I know for us, uh, for mm -hmm. larger firms, they would uh, switch websites every two years or so. But for, for a small engraving business, how, how often do you suggest sort of updating a website? Yeah, um, good point. Uh, you should update the website every single week. Um, but how much should you do every week? You should change at least one page or add a new page. The optimal. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, I meant not not update, but actually uh, <laughs> like refresh the design of the website. Um, a whole relaunch. I do that every three years. Um, so because there is a technology jump every three years. Um, the last one we've seen was responsive design to have a layout that is that can be used and viewed on every device, mobile device, desktop device, you name it. Uh, and the technology is changing so fast, the pace is so fast that you will certainly need to update or relaunch your whole website every three years. Otherwise, everybody can tell that uh, it is outdated and you don't want to convey the, the image or the look of an outdated company via your website. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question a bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we had relevant information on your website for your customers. We had always update your website. And the last point, the goal should be for you to be number one on Google for the inquiries or searches relevant to your business. So if you are if you have a strong focus on engraving trophies, for example, one of your key, main keywords you're, you're targeting should be engraving trophies or laser engraving trophies. Um, maybe with adding the, the city name or the your location name to this keyword. But we'll dive into this topic in much more detail in one of the following slides. Mm -hmm. Any if anybody questions? has, yep. yeah, sure, if anybody has questions, just, uh, just uh, leave them in the chat. But uh, right now, no, we don't have anything. OK. So we're, covering, we're still covering the basics. Then let's move on to the next one, please. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a website or if you're considering to do a complete relaunch to make a new website, this is the topic for you now. Um, basically, there are two ways. You can create the website yourself and we recommend using a tool case. Most of us aren't programmers or web developers and a lot of companies know that. So they've built toolkits tool to support you with building a website. Uh, you don't, have, don't need to have any tech knowledge for that. Um, two tools we're, we're recommending are, for example, Wix or Squarespace. Yeah, and, and one thing I should mention about uh, about these websites, mm -hmm. I mean, they're very user-friendly, and you can choose from a, a bunch of different templates and customize. Uh, the only issue is a lot of the times it's uh, it's a um, like a monthly payment subscription, and uh, a lot of the times you don't actually own uh, the content outright, like you can't migrate sort of the, the template out to another um, to another hosting platform. So yeah. you're, you're kind of stuck with what you have. So you just got to be cognizant of that. I mean, Wix and Squarespace are really, really good for if you're just starting out and you just want some kind of a web present and, and you, you might not have necessarily budget to get a web designer. Um, you know, so you might go with Wix and Squarespace. But after you've been in business for two, three uh, four years and you have an established website, it's it's kind of better to uh, to go with um, with uh, section with section B and have somebody else uh, do it for you. Yep, yep. Uh, that gets us directly to the advantages and drawbacks of those two options we're covering. Um, if we take a look at option A again, uh, you mentioned the subscription models. You can estimate costs of fifteen dollars per month for the subscription. And literally, when you stop subscribing to them, your website is offline in the next minute. So consider that you, you'll be dependent on them. They'll bind you with the subscription. That's that's the issue there. 
Uh, and but it's usually yeah. it's usually not even month to month. I think you have to like get it per year. So if you yeah. decide to switch the business name or something like that, you'd have to pay for the remainder of the the contract agreement. Yeah. Uh, but the main benefit to point that out again, if you need a website within a few days, let's say within a week, then this is this is probably the best option for you, because you you can uh, sign up to their services, create the web, the website within a day or two, and you're and you're good to go. Um, in contrary to that, option B, have somebody else create the website for you. You can hire, for example, freelancers via Elance or local designers. Um, students from a university uh, who do the website for you um, they can use uh, from a, they can choose from a variety of templates or you can choose your website design together with them and they'll build it for you so they don't start from scratch they might be using tools like um, WordPress is the most popular content management system or the most popular website software to do that and the benefit and, uh, yeah, sure yeah sorry go, go ahead Thomas sorry no, no, you can always. Oh, I, I was well. I was just gonna say the uh, Elance is Elance.com. It's it's a big website for not just web designers, but for um, all sorts of uh, uh, like if you're looking for programmers, if you're looking for graphic artists. I mean, it's it's a huge website uh, to get freelance uh, designers from across the world. And a, a lot of the times, people would go to Elance and they might hire somebody from across the world. Let's say from a. a a country that's obviously not in North America, and um, you know the the problem with that. I mean, I've I've used Elance a while ago as well. Um, the communication you, you got to remember if you hire somebody from across the world, and obviously they might be, you know, cheaper to two or three times cheaper. Uh, the problem is communication. The problem is uh, you know if the designer decides to close that down shop. Uh, you might not get a hold of them. So, I mean, we always recommend to, if you are going for a web designer to build your website, uh, try to always go to somebody local, especially in your area that you can actually physically meet and talk about, uh, talk to, uh, and then they, they can sort of guide you through the, the web building process. Um, I mean, you obviously spend more than if you go through Elance, uh, but you sort of have that safety net where the designer is physically there. You can call them on the phone at any time during business hours. You know, you don't have to wait until it's, uh, you know, another time across the world. So it's something to to consider. And I mean, I personally recommend. Would you agree, Thomas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's completely different if you know somebody face to face instead of from uh, around the world. And uh, if there's an issue, you can give them a call or even show up at their office and they will make sure that your website is up and running again in case it goes offline, something like that. And as it's such a crucial, important part of your marketing tools, I would also suggest to use um, a local help or company, freelancer, whatever, not somebody from, um, from the other side of the world. Um, let me go back to the fees uh, we've mentioned for option a with wix or squarespace the costs of 15 dollars per month if you set up a website with um external person on your own that means um you can expect costs of 1000 to 1500 dollars for a website that's uh containing 5 to 15 pages does that go along with your experience Liv? Yeah, yeah. And one thing that you guys should watch out for is that, I mean, if you have more than 10 or 15 pages, uh, you got to remember that now most designers, uh, they're not going to build the website from scratch. Uh, it's most likely they're going to take a template from a, like a website called ThemeForest. They might even choose a template with you. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot, a lot of people have sort of a drawback, like, oh, I don't want a template. I don't want it to look like everyone else's site. But it's not the case. I mean, they take the template and they completely customize the color, the the dynamics of the website, your logos, so it looks like a different, a completely different website from the same template than another company could have had. Um, so actually adding pages. So a lot of the times, what designers would say is, okay, you get you know uh, five hundred dollars up to fifteen pages, and then mm -hmm. it's like twice or three times the price, and then they add like up to fifty pages. But at the end of the day, they're getting the content from you. Like they're they're not going to write content from you because that's going to be extra. Uh, so actually only adding additional pages is a click of a button on a, on a CMS. So That's you just got to be cognizant of that. Yes, it does take more time to create more pages, but the price difference shouldn't be that significant. And that's what 
that's kind of the knowledge that you should know when they're creating the website for you. I mean, the additional pages is not exponentially the additional amount of work involved. It's just Absolutely. literally clicking the button and then putting the content that you provided for them onto the, the page they created. So just yeah. be, be cognizant of that. Yeah, that's true. The main effort uh, for the web designers is, is the initial setup um, of your website software and adding the template. Once the first, let's say, five pages are available on your website, adding five more isn't a big deal for them. But they'll always try to sell it um, at a high amount, to put it this way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So these are basically the two options we would recommend you. Um, also consider if you want a website with information only or if you're looking for a web shop which lets you sell your products online. Um, a web shop needs more attention for the setup. Um, you need to install the processes. How does it work? How does the, the shopping cart work? Stuff like that, payment information, uh, payment mar partners. So expect more costs for a web shop. Um, and uh, I should also mention, Thomas, I mean, I, I used to work for a hosting company. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the times, I mean, if you guys are buying hosting and, and, and hosting a domain, I mean, we'll kind of get, get into it later. But the hosting is kind of like the parking space of your website is the, where the, the website is located on the virtual web. Yeah, so it's, it's on a, it's, it's on a <laughs> server somewhere. Yeah. Sorry? Sorry, I just want to say hosting just means it's a big PC that's very reliable and it's on 24-7. That's all. Hosting yeah. sounds super mythical to some of us probably, uh, but it's not more than a server that has to be very reliable and online 24-7. Exactly. So a lot of hosting companies like GoDaddy, obviously the most famous mm -hmm. ones, uh, HostGator, Bluehost, whatever. Uh, most most small businesses would, uh, you know, they won't necessarily have their own servers. They would just go to a hosting company like GoDaddy and then buy their website domain, their hosting, and, and yes, it's very simple. Uh, and then, you know, that hosting company will actually start trying to sell you the website. Like, oh, you know, a lot of them make their own websites now, and that that could be an option for you. I mean, um, it might be cheaper than going with a local designer. But again, you might not have that same kind of um, uh, that customer service uh, that you might with a, an independent local designer whose sole business is to basically build your website and a few other websites. I mean, remember these guys, they, they make thousands of websites. They have hundreds of thousands of customers for, for their hosting, and then they constantly sell them the, the website. So uh, just it, it all depends on what you're looking for. I mean, if it's a very simple website and somebody from the hosting company can build it for you, I mean, that might, might be an option for you. But if it's a more detailed kind of uh, a website that needs a lot of changes, you're going to add a, a bunch of different products, um, you know, it might be easier to go with a, a local designer or a design, uh, like a boutique design firm, I, I guess. Yeah. Um, Lev, now that, that if you mentioned um, hosting, we should probably uh, cover a few of the technical terms uh, a freelancer might sling at you or uh, an external company. Um, hosting or domain. The domain of the website is the, like practically the name of the website or also your brand. Um, you want to make sure that the domain is in your hands, that you are the only owner for the domain. The domain itself, it costs a few bucks per month, not worth mentioning, um, but some external companies might uh, take the ownership of the domain away from you for whatever reason. Um, it's not very professional if they do, so always make sure that you're the owner of your domain. Like our domain, for example, is www.trotaglaser.com, and of course, we made sure that we are the owner of this domain. Nobody else can use it in, um, apart from us. Mm -hmm. um, also, make sure that the designer you're working together with is not the administrator uh, after the setup of the website is complete. You want to make sure that you're the only one who can change the contents, the text, the images of your website. Um, that it is literally in your hands to build the website after that, after the initial phase. Of course, during the setup, the, the web designer needs to have the full administration rights to help you with building the website. Um, another point, we've mentioned it before, CMS means content management system. It's just another term for website building software or website managing software. Um, pay attention to this, that uh, you should use tools that are very popular in your area. 
For example, um, in Northern America, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Drupal and Magento are the, the most popular tools. And by using them, you can make sure that you can transfer the website or the support to a different company. Just in case uh, the first web designer closes down shop, you need to have another company to support you. And by using these tools, you can make sure that there are a lot of companies out there who can help you with that. Yeah, and uh, you got to remember the CMS, the content management system, is basically the back end of the system. So when I say uh, the, the web designer clicks a button to add a page, he'll do that in the CMS. He'll do that in WordPress. Uh, and a lot of the times they give access uh, even to, to you guys, to the administrators, and say, well, you know, you can add your own content. Uh, so definitely, uh, Thomas is right, use uh, the popular ones because, first of all, they're very user friendly. I mean, that's what they're built for. Um, and then, again, for migration purposes, it's important. Um, another topic would be to have a mobile-friendly website. That's an absolute must nowadays. It's also called responsive design. So you just have to make one single design for every device, device for every screen size that, it's out there, that is out there. So it, your website will work on small mobile phones, on big desktop uh, monitors, and so on. Um, always make sure that the, the template, the layout, whatever you call it, the, the, the design of your website is supporting responsive design or is mobile friendly. Yeah, and a lot of sites that we've seen, um, you know, from even from uh, laser owners, uh, they're, they're not responsive. And you can tell right away that they're not responsive. Um, and we're not just saying it so people on their phones can check it out in an easier fashion, but it's actually... Uh, Google um, will give you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas, Google will actually give you more um, ranking on Google if your design is mobile versus if you're a competitor that don't have a mobile-friendly uh, design. So that's that's why it's important, not just for the obvious effectiveness of you know your customers being able to, to see on their phone, but uh, you'll actually get better rankings on Google. Absolutely right. Um, to give you some statistics on this, uh, 30 to 50 percent of website traffic nowadays is coming through mobile devices. This means that up to half of your customers who are visiting your website will see it on their mobile phone, and you want to make sure that the design looks crisp and clean on their phone uh, so that it will be easy for them to find the information they're looking for or to contact you. Um, last point on our list here. Um, can I pass this on to you, Lev? You found this neat article. Yeah, yeah. We'll actually post this in the description below afterwards. Um, it's it's just a great uh, article. It, it goes really in depth. Uh, let me show you guys. Uh, it goes really in depth about uh, the cost of building a website. Uh, some of the stuff that we talked about about what you should watch out for, how you might be able, how you might get scammed. Uh, and it just goes really, really um, in depth. I strongly recommend to sort of read it and uh, and sort of study it before. Even if even if you have a website right now uh, and you're looking to you know get a new website down the road, I mean it's a, it's a nice uh, article to read. Okay, I'm just going to flip it back. Yeah, go ahead, Thomas. We've covered all the points on this slide. Um, next up is the structure of your website, the navigation structure. Um, we have a quick draft here of how your um, website should usually look like, because this is the structure everybody of us is used to. When you, when you see a website, there's usually a home screen or a home page. Um, there's the About Us section. There's a section covering products and services. Um, and there's most the most important one is the last one we'll cover. It's the contact us section. So I'm going from left to right. When you see the chart here, the about us section is to deliver some information about who who you are. And you, one tip up front: you cannot make it too personal. There are thousands of companies out there, um, and nowadays people like to know more about you, what you're doing, what what your passion is, why you started this business, how you started this business, the, the hurdles or problems you encountered during the, the setup phase, stuff like this. Um, this makes gives the, the website a very strong personal touch and creates a lot of trust in the few seconds you have to convince your customer when they visit your website. Um, something in between. Uh, 
I, I always like to ask people if they know how long how long their customers or users stay on their websites. Um, it's actually around 100 seconds per visit. So you've got 100 seconds to, to show them why they should contact you. Because the main goal is to get an inquiry from them, a call, maybe a contact form, um, entry, something like that. So yeah, and, and above, uh, sorry, Thomas, just uh -huh. going back, above above everything, it's, it's trust, right? So, yeah. I mean, if you have a website that's, again, without any pictures and has three products of a list, Nobody's going to ever trust or, or buy from you. So the more uh, information you put about yourself, how long you've been in business, a lot of companies now put like a meet our team page and they have a little write up and a picture about their team. It just yep, creates exactly. that trust. And, you know, you'd want to go with your company if you're a laser engraver uh, or like a sign maker or a, or a awards and trophy guy over, over your competitor who might not have that sort of, um, Whole, holistic approach and say, you know, meet our team. This is who we are. This is the products. We're very proud of our products of, of our laser engraving. So uh, that's kind of why you want to put as much information about you, uh, your business as possible. Yeah, that's exactly the point. Um, we've been we've been analyzing a lot of the traffic on our websites, and one thing is for sure: the, the users, the customers who are visiting the about us section. They've got one question in mind, and this question is, can I trust these companies? Can I trust these guys? Most important part here, team images or images of yourself on the website. Uh, it's not a face-to-face -face situation when somebody is visiting a website and to create trust, somebody should see uh, the faces who, of the people who are working at your company, definitely. Um, next up is products and services. Whether you're selling uh, ready-made products or you offer engraving services, you should cover those two points in as much detail as possible. This means, for example, showing examples of what you did for other customers, telling people which kind of materials you specialize in, what you can cut, laser cut or engrave for them, which thickness. Um, if, you're, if you're specializing in wood, for example, which, which types of wood um, can you engrave and mark and we'll see it later on in our webinar. This also helps with SEO, with uh, optimization to get number one at the Google search uh, results page. The more you go into detail with what you're offering, the stronger your website will appear to Google and to, cu to your customers at the same time. Yeah, and definitely break your products up in, in, a, you know, in categories. If you have a ton of products, like uh, if you're a sign maker and you're doing outdoor signs, indoor signs, uh, building construction signs, um, uh, you know, anything like that, uh, definitely split them up in categories. Don't just list them all. Uh, every category should have a, a separate page. Every product should have a separate page with a description and, and obviously pictures about them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, splitting up content it is very wise because it uh, reduces the time customers need to find what they're looking for. Or uh, I always like to draw up a picture. Nobody is looking at your website in the evening in front of a chimney wearing a bathrobe with a glass of red wine in hand. <laughs> they want to find the information in as uh, few seconds as possible. Uh, Thomas, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, sorry. We, we have oh, a question, but finish, finish <laughs> what you're saying. Yes, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. We, we have a question from Fred. Um, uh, he's asking, in the products menu, uh, should the links go to pages or subdomains? Does it make a difference uh, to SEO? Yes, it does. Um, I, I hope I got the question right. Let me try to answer it this way. If possible, always stay on one single domain. Um, I'll explain it a bit. Um, if you take our website, it's uh, www.trotechlaser.com. A subdomain would be, for example, products.trotechlaser.com. And if you're working with uh, several subdomains, you're splitting the trust or the, the value of your website up into smaller parts. Uh, and it's always more important to have one strong website instead of multiple weaker ones. I hope this will answer the question to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And we actually have another question. Uh, okay. I, start, uh, I started my business one month ago. I don't have uh, too, too much images to show on my website. Can I use some examples from Trotec to show all that I can do with my Trotec machine? That's a great question. That's a very good question. Um, 
best way is is to contact probably your your locals uh, trotex subsidiary we really like to share our images um we just want to know who is using them and the best way would be if you use your if you use images from the trotex website add a link here and there telling that you've used them from the trotex website that would mean a lot to us um and then you're also on the safe side so that we we do not accidentally stumble across websites who are using our images without permission but if you link back to us, you're good to go. Yeah, and uh, just from Canada, uh, you know, you guys can email me directly. I'll leave my email in the description of the video. If you're looking to, to use images, I can, I can send you high resolution images as well. Yeah, but the bottom line is, yes, please do use our image. We will, images, we would like to support you this way, but uh, mention on your website that you got them from us. Okay. Um, Back to this question with the images, uh, you can also use stuck photos for the setup phase for the, let's say for the first half year when you've built a new website, um, you get stock images at around $1 per image. So that's pretty cheap. Uh, and there is no time limit uh, how long you can use them. So that helps a lot, but please uh, pay attention to this fact. Uh, people will see that those images um, haven't been made by you because they have, they will be used by different websites as well. Um, and if you want to have an individual website, please try to get images, um, make them yourself, maybe with a good camera. Uh, it, it's probably easier than you think to get images if you do them yourself. Yeah, and uh, I should also mention, uh, I mean, even if you don't have the, the budget for an expensive camera, a lot of the, 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 the phones like iPhone 6, uh, the Samsung has a great camera on them, yeah. and all you have to do is uh, there's um, there's a, a product on Amazon called like a, a light box kit. Mm -hmm. Especially if the products are small, if they're not like massive products, if they're generally in the like the 30 to 40 inch range, uh, and it's basically a box with two lamps. I think it's about a hundred dollars, uh, and then it's like a it has the white background all around, so you can put your products and then take a picture with your phone and the lighting is great so it looks like a semi-professional photo it looks a lot better than if you just take a photo with your phone in, in your office yeah. uh, so maybe you'd want to invest a hundred dollars into something like that and then you can go from there and all your all your products will be uh, will look a lot more professional yeah that's a good point lighting is more important than having a very expensive camera yeah um so where did we leave off? We left off. Uh, we're talking about uh, products and services, and we just talked about how uh, to split into different categories uh, and the linking. So we can go into the contact us. Yeah. Um, uh, we've left the most important part of your website uh, as the last point on this slide. Uh, what do you want when somebody is using a website? You want them to contact you and ask for your services or for a price quote for an inquiry. So the contact us section is really the most important part of the website. And it's not just a single page. Um, you have to provide your contact information on many different spaces. Number one would be the header at the very top of your website where the navigation menu is. Number two would be the footer. If somebody happens to scroll at, to the very end of any page, on every page you should deliver your contact information. Um, what does that mean? Telephone number? email address, probably links to your social media accounts if you're using some, but most important part is telephone number, email address, and a link to a contact form. Yeah, and I should also mention a lot of the, the new designs, uh, new website template designs, they kind of have an overlap bar either at the bottom or the right or the left or the top where it's, it's always there no matter what uh, area of the website you go to. There's a bar that has all your contact information uh, and then it'll have a button for, you know, for the contact form or a button for, uh, not necessarily a button, but just the, the phone number where people can reach you. Yeah. And uh, if we're talking just a little bit more advanced, uh, if you're using Google Analytics, the, the way you measure conversions in Google Analytics is if somebody fills out the contact form and it goes to the thank you page, and that's and that's sort of how you measure and monitor your, your leads. And that's that's for more advanced. Yeah. But that might be a topic for one of the further sessions, probably. Yeah. Um, so to sum it up again, most important part, contact, providing contact information, then products and services, and finally, the section about you, who you are, and to gain trust, you should add images of yourself or of your team on your website. 
And one, one quick thing I just want to mention, it says, uh, it says here for a promotional video on your homepage. I mean, uh, promotional videos, um, you know, they're obviously really, really great. Uh, you guys know that we do a lot of videos in, in Canada, but uh, in terms of a price range, if you want to do a promotional video, you don't have to uh, get a, a production company to, to have a super crazy professional <laughs> video. Uh, Again, you can target. You can actually go to the local colleges or universities where they have a video program. Maybe have some kind of a partnership with them, where you know, for their uh, co-op placement, they can make uh, some videos for you guys or a promotional video for for your company. Uh, and you might want to pay them as a as a co-op student. Uh, but it, it's not necessarily. Um, you know, when people think videos, they think, oh, it's too too difficult, too expensive. It's not really the case nowadays uh, because of the, the sort of YouTube generation. But uh, just just keep that in mind. Yeah, and don't be afraid to have a video that looks uh, a bit rough or edgy, because that makes the video even better. Uh, that makes it more authentic. If if you think about a very professional, high class image video, um, it might look. Um, perfect, well-designed, but people don't trust in such videos anymore because everybody now know it, now, nowadays knows that uh, these videos have been made by yeah, a design filmer um, and they are packed full with uh, marketing messages. That's a, that's a great point, uh, especially you know, for a lot of our customers. Uh, you guys are small to medium size, laser engravers or sign shops or award and trophy guys. Uh, and again, a lot of you are mostly selling to, to your uh, close-knit community. You know, a lot of customers sell across Canada, North America, whatever. But uh, generally, you know, you want to build that trust like we always talk about and for the local community. So Thomas is completely right. You don't want that sort of commercial feel that you're reading from a script. Just talk off the cuff. Talk about your business. Why? Uh, why your customers uh, should choose you, why you put 100% into your products. You know, you have the best machine, you have the Trotec laser, uh, the best engraving, um, the best quality. So, I mean, that's that's definitely a great, great point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll much. go to the next slide. Yep, yes, please. Any questions up until now on the, in the chat? Uh, not so far, no. Okay. Um, so here is a second slide which uh, covers what we've already mentioned. I'll just go over it briefly. Most important part of the website is the contact data. Without it, people might uh, leave your website without inquiring for your products. Then, of course, products and services. Try to be very detailed with what you can offer with a lot of images, long texts. Um, and also give some examples from, from your business, what you've sold so far from probably case studies, products you made for other customers. Then we have the about section, which will be the point, the very part that creates trust. People don't know you yet. They just see your website. Having an image about you or your team helps a lot. And uh, one point we've, we've didn't mention so far is the disclaimer and privacy. This is uh, mandatory for every website to show who is the owner of the website, the, your address, the business the website is associated to. Um, and the, the privacy text is about how you're using your website and the, the data the customers are passing on to you. If you pass it on to uh, um, third party companies, this should be covered in there. But don't be afraid. There are a lot of templates and pre-made texts out there which you can copy and paste for your website for your privacy text. So yeah, if you just Google a disclaimer and privacy a template, you'll find yeah, it. You don't need a lawyer to write this text for you. <laughs> OK, so much for the website structure and the contents. Let's move on. Uh, now it's getting a bit more technical. We'll cover the myth of search engine optimization. This is what SEO stands for. Um, this has been. On, in online marketing, this has been the major question in the last 10 years. How do search engines define who is getting this number one spot on the search result pages? And there are a few signals for Google and the other search engines to have uh, um, to tell them why your website should be on this very number one spot. Let's go through them. Um, the first topic here is provide relevant content for the searcher. Um, let me explain that a bit. Uh, you have a lot of different users, uh, uh, 
call them users on purpose on your website. Not all of them are customers. Some might be students who might uh, want to inform themselves about a certain topic. Um, other people might be from your personal environment. A lot of people are getting to a website, but you want to make sure that the ones who are looking to, to buy something from you, that you prefer those users. And to steer them to your website, you have to include keywords. So these are the certain text parts of the text or key phrases that match what they are looking for. So if not, if I would be searching for a, serv for a service provider for laser engraving uh, several trophies or ball pens for me, then I would go to google.com and I would type in laser engrave uh, ball pen or laser engrave key ring, something like that. And uh, the companies that pop up in the first spots on the search result page, this would be my preferred website to take a look at. You're doing a test? Yes, I'm just, just showing uh, everyone so they can see. Yeah, cool. Ball pins. So, well, I mean, <laughs> we, we pop up. Uh, it might be easier to type something like uh, sign maker Toronto, for example, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're a sign shop. Yeah, this is a good example. Like a lot of uh, contractors might be looking for, for signage if they're making buildings or if they're making uh, cable tags. Mm -hmm. So they might search something like that. Um, so as you can see, this where it says add, it's a PPC or pay-per-click or Google AdWords. Uh, we might cover that in the more advanced uh, sections. Uh, I know that from the registrations that we, we sent out, not a lot of people are doing AdWords. Mm -hmm. uh, there, mo there, a lot of people are doing uh, like Facebook ads and uh, Etsy ads and things like that. Uh, you might want to really consider uh, AdWords because that's sort of the, I mean, Google is the number one search engine um, and more people might look for things on Google before they might look uh, on Facebook or, or Etsy. So just just keep that in mind. Um, and it's, it's not that difficult to set up. You might need a PPC consultant to, to sort of walk you through it. Uh, there's lots of videos on, on YouTube about how to set it up. Uh, so don't be sort of intimidated. We might cover it in a different, um, at a, at a different webinar, but that's sort of that's what this is, and they always pop up in the beginning. And you can kind of tell if the if the search word is popular or not. So if uh, if I type in um, a very specific keyword, I might not have uh, like if I want uh, a yellow um, yellow sign for building for just for example, it's a very specific term. As you can see, there's only two ads that pop up. So the, the keyword yellow sign for building, um, and this is when we say keyword, uh, all four signs are all four sorry words are not keywords. The entire sort of uh, search term is called a keyword. So this keyword mm -hmm. is not very very popular compared to uh, sign maker Toronto. So it's it's a it's a you, you can tell right away. We'll we'll talk about uh, in, in future slides about what what we're talking about in terms of keywords. But you can tell that SignMaker Toronto is pretty popular. It has the map list things. And then, Thomas, you wanted to, to talk about sort of the SEO uh, portion, which is which is this part. Yeah, just a quick outlook how, how keywords work. Um, if somebody types in SignMaker Toronto, Google will go to millions of websites and check if they have these words on their website. So they're matching the search intent is the term for that. They're matching um, what the, the user or the customer is looking for with the content or the text you provide on your website. And the better the match, um, the higher your chances for this number one position on Google. Um, I'd also like to comment on this example they've used. This is a good one. So in, in the term SignMaker Toronto, we have, there we have two very important parts. Number one is SignMaker. So this is the, the service you're delivering to your customers. And number two is Toronto. This means this signals Google that this search or this customer is looking for the services in this, in this area. So just in Toronto or in the vicinity, and it will limit the search results or the websites that are shown to companies that are from this area. So if you're from Toronto or any other region, you want to make sure that uh, your address is on your website on different spots to inform Google about this, that you're from this area. 
Uh, Thomas, we, we got a question. Uh, it's a good question um, from Dan. He's asking, uh, what are the most important differences between marketing to consumers versus marketing to businesses? Uh, and then just a quick sort of thing that popped in my head is uh, marketing to, I guess, to businesses, you would use something like AdWords, where a lot of the, uh, the ads for consumers will be on social media. Um, but Thomas, if you want to add more to, to that, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty broad topic. We could do a, just a webinar on that alone. Mm -hmm. Um, I just got, I just, I'm just thinking about the website now as a marketing tool. Uh, I wouldn't differentiate, uh, this on the website. So I wouldn't make different contents for either big, uh, you, uh, for small customers or for consumer customers or enterprise customers. I wouldn't make a, a difference there because you're unable to steer them to the right pages. Google will, will take this from you. So Google will show the one page Google thinks is best for them. And in the worst case, um, the, the wrong customers are seeing your contents or the right customers are seeing the wrong contents on your website. So I would make a, a differentiation there. Yeah, um, especially if, 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 for example, if you're if you're looking for you know one sign to to engrave for for you know if you're end user consumer versus if you're a contractor looking for a thousand signs uh, and you search the search terms might be the same. I mean, yeah. uh, a, a consumer won't 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 put you know I just need one sign. They'll put you know Sign Maker Toronto. Same thing if you're if you're a contractor looking for ten thousand. Uh, signs. You're not going to type in, you know, ten thousand signs. You're, you're still yeah. going to type in Sign Maker Toronto. So you're still uh, competing. I mean, when you're a manufacturer like Trotec, it's a little different. But when you're a, a, a service provider like uh, like you guys, most of you, uh, it's it's generally Thomas is right. It's generally the same when it comes to to yeah. SEO. That, that's that's the most. Thank you for summing it uh, up. For me, <laughs> but that's the most important point. There won't be a different difference in what people are searching for on Google. So they they will be using exactly the same words. So Google cannot tell if they're a big customer or a small one. And in both cases, they will get to the same page on your website. So I wouldn't make a differentiation there on your website. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Um, and th Thomas, what you one more thing? Um, what yeah, do you yeah. could what you could do for let's let's make up this case with the sign maker again. Let's uh, take this case again. Um, if somebody is looking for uh, having one thousand signs engraved, uh, and what somebody else is looking for a single sign to be engraved, both will go to the same page on your website. But at the bottom of this page, you can uh, add two different buttons: uh, one for contact me for a single sign, or contact us for high volume production something like this. This might help. I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Probably. So to show them that you're equipped for both kinds of um, inquiries. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to talk about, uh, I think you left off uh, regarding uh, SEO, how Google sort of defines uh, yeah, could we, SEO. Yeah, could we go back to the slide? Yeah, of course. It helps me a bit to structure the presentation. <laughs> uh, we left off at the keywords. Uh, next up is the size of your website and size means how much information do you provide? So Google is mes measuring sorry, two things. How broad is your website? That means how many different pages are part of your website. And the second part they're measuring is how deep is your website? The depth, um, the knowledge depth or information depth of your website. Let me give you an example. Um, we're in the services or product section of your website and you're co covering different materials there. You, you have a page about wood engraving, a page about metal marking, you have a page about cutting acrylics and so on. The more different materials you're covering, the broader your website gets. Uh, now to the depth, uh, we take the wood page as an example. The longer the texts on this page are, the more images you provide, the more information you provide, the more you go into technical details, the deeper mm -hmm. the provided information or the contents are. So you're looking for having different top covering different topics and for, for covering each topic into as much detail as possible. Of course. Yeah, one, one thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Thomas. No, I just wanted to add for the startup, for the start phase, for the initial setup of the website, you won't have those detailed information ready. 
Um, this is a growing process. So the, the better your website gets, the more information you will be having and the more materials you can add or the more services you can add to your website. And this connects nicely uh, to the one thing we mentioned before. Keep your website updated, updated every week. And you should have a, have a kind of calendar where you say, this week I'm doing a page about wood. Next week I'm adding a page about how to cut or engrave paper. Yeah, one thing about fre uh, the freshness of the content, which is a, a great reason to have a blog on your website, uh, because even if you you could just write about you know your 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 daily experience, some tips you can give to your customers, obviously projects that you're doing. Uh, every time you sort of add a blog page, it refreshes the website, and Google sees that you're constantly using the website, which is uh, you know really going to go on miles uh, compared to a competitor that sort of just builds a website and doesn't touch it for two years. So uh, w the great reason for a blog, and we strongly, strongly recommend is for that reason alone. Obviously, you want to, you know, you, you want to give that the trust and the and the local feel uh, and, and and guidance to, to your customers. But the more important reason to have a blog is for search engine optimization, is for to, to be number one on Google. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're, uh, if you're a sign maker, you can create uh, a blog page and put title tags, or uh, I guess we'll talk about that after. But um, you, you, you could do specific um, themes to every single blog articles, and that blog page can be uh, posted on on Google as well. If you let's say if you're doing a wood engraving of a special kind of item, like let's say if it's native art, uh, and you're doing just a blog post on that. Uh, that might pop up in the Google search results when somebody's looking for uh, a native art, a native la native engraving art in Toronto, for example. So just just to give you guys that that, that idea, uh, Thomas, anything to add to that? <laughs> I got a I got a funny side fact for you. Um, a lot of enterprise websites or big corporation websites they have a news section. Um, and a lot of statistics found out that users or visitors on the website are not paying attention to those news sections at all. So these news are only to make sure that the website gets updated regularly, gets new content every, every week um, as a signal for Google to show, hey, our website is always up to date, even if nobody reads those news articles. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, we, we have another question. Uh, is there a particular place we should place the keywords, headline, body of text, etc.? cetera? Uh, I don't know if we, you, we're going to talk about that after. In, in the, I guess the next slide will exactly cover this question. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. List. I'll keep it in the back of my head so that it won't get lost. We'll cover it in a few seconds. Yeah. Um, so let's go briefly over the remaining points here. Loading speed is also very important for getting a good spot on the Google search results page. Um, because a very fast website is a website that uh, people like to use, a very slow website, people will leave the website without having contacted you. And Google knows that. So there are two ways to improve the loading speed. Number one is contact the company who is doing the hosting for you, the company who's having the, the PC that's on 24-7. Um, so they got some knobs to turn, they can, can improve the situation for you. And the other part is talking to your web designer in case your website is very slow um, and tell them to use a plugin. This is a, a sm very small software um, to reduce the size of the images of your website. Um, it will take them, I guess, half an hour to install this plugin, plugin and it will automatically reduce the file size of all images. And you'll see this is a major boost to any website and there is no more effort included after this 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I know. Also, for uh, for WordPress, there's plugins like uh, SuperCache, uh, which actually caches the pages. So if you're a returning user, uh, the the page doesn't have to upload uh, all over again. It pops up really quickly. So it's things like that that can help uh, speed a website. Uh, again, you can actually Google all these things. If you Google how to speed up my website on, let's say, on WordPress, uh, a lot of there's so many articles uh, and videos now about how to speed up the website. But yeah, number one thing uh, is definitely don't go cheap on the hosting, especially mm -hmm. if you have a uh, uh, lots of content. If you have like, if it's a three page website, obviously it doesn't matter. But if you know that you're gonna put lots of different pages, um, one thing we actually didn't mention is uh, localizing pages. So uh, if you're doing, um, 
if you're doing, let's say, sign making, uh, and you're in Toronto, for example, you should technically have a, a page for every single, I guess, major region of Toronto. So uh, a page on Mississauga, uh, to, uh, Mississauga sign making, uh, a page on North York sign making, because people can actually type those keywords in and obviously don't duplicate the content uh, between each page. It has to be, it has to be different. Of course, there's a lot more work. Uh, but the more pages you put that are local, um, the more chances you can get for uh, for a better website, a stronger website, and a stronger ranking. Uh, so definitely, if you're having lots and lots of pages, like over 50 pages, you have videos and images, uh, don't, don't go cheap on the hosting. Get uh, you know you might need a virtual private server. Uh, you might not, but. Uh, uh, it's definitely worth the additional dollars to get a, a, a fast loading speed. And uh, you can do speed tests for your website as well. Uh, there's different plugins for the popular content management systems. Uh, and you can also do it, I think, through, through analytics, Thomas, if I'm not mistaken. But you can test the speed of your website. Uh, that's, and that's it should, yeah. Uh, no, no value, no figure you get out of these tools is absolutely uh, exact, but they will give you an indication um, if your website is really that slow and they'll also provide a lot of useful tips uh, how to improve your website. You can pass them on to an external person, to a web designer, and they can fix that for you. Or even the hosting company, they provide a lot of loading speed support um, with uh, uh, technicians dedicated to improving uh, the website loading speed. Um, to finish this slide here, there's one more point left, and believe me, this is the, the hardest one to achieve. It is called link building, and it's similar to word of mouth in real life. Um, so in real life, if somebody is recommending your business to customers, they are very likely to contact you. The same is true for the digital world. Link building means getting a backlink from an external website. This could be one of your customers, and if they're very happy with your services, then they would link to your website and recommend other people to visit you. Um, the act of getting more links for your website is called link building. This could be links from your customers. This can also be links from third party directories. Um, I always mention yellow pages, websites, or Yext is a service which covers a lot of different websites. Um, so if people look up your telephone number in one of those um, directory or business listings, they should find you there and uh, always a link is included to those profiles there. A lot of those profiles or listings you can get for free. Yeah, one, <coughs> excuse me, one thing I should mention <coughs> as far as link building, there's a lot of companies out there like SEO companies uh, that offer a link building services. Uh, be very, very careful with that, uh, especially if it sounds too good to be true. Like if they're offering you 200 links for the price of uh, whatever, uh, whenever they talk in bulk, I mean, link building is it's is it's uh, um, it's a quite a, tre a treacherous process. I would say it's a, it's a long process. And if they're saying you know they're gonna give you 200 links right off the bat or with the first three months, it's generally um, th they have like other websites that they control that they link to your website yeah. and then they can show you the statistics and say look you have 200 links right away well yeah. that's a huge no-no for for google and google can actually penalize your website if they feel that you're doing what's called black hat uh link building mm -hmm. um so it's a it definitely it link building if it's done properly it's usually very expensive if you get yeah. a third party to get it uh, and it's usually they charge per link. So it'll be like $50 per link because uh, uh -huh. yeah, I got go some more up to date figures for that. We, oh, okay, some, we, we found something out there. If somebody is providing your links in bulk for less than $300 per, per single link, then don't do it. This is an absolute waste of time and money. Professional companies charge for a single link around $500. Um, and the lower limit for buying links for you should be $300. There are some links that are cheaper to get, but everything cheaper than that, please, please don't do it. It will, you'll just waste money and time. There won't be any benefit for your website. Yeah. The best thing in terms of finding links, uh, I, I guess the recommend recommendation is, uh, you know, let's say if you're an awards and trophy maker, mm -hmm. uh, and you're in a, 
you know, you're in a small city, maybe like uh, Windsor, Ontario has like a hundred, some with thousand of people. Uh, definitely, you, you should already be, you know, in the community, building the sort of relationships in the community with other businesses where they can share uh, leads between each other. And the same thing can be done for links. So if you have sort of a, a list of, of, of partners in the community, that's the first place you need to go to. Uh, if you if you're sponsoring some kind of a, you know school events or anything like that, go. The best links you can get is from education, uh, from Absolutely. schools, from universities. Uh, so ask those people to, to link back to your website. Um, it's very, very easy to do because you already have a relationship with these people um, and it'll be worth it in the long run. Uh, yeah. Thomas, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a question. Uh, how do links from our own Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, factor into this? Um, Google has gotten pretty clever in finding out that uh, those different accounts on different social media websites all belong to one business. So the, the effect on your website will be very marginal, I'm afraid. Yeah, so it's, it'll just count as one link from Facebook. And they know Facebook is a social media site, so it won't be as effective as, let's say, a university or a college uh, linking to your site. Yes, yes, that's also a good point. So a lot of companies, millions of, of users are there on are uh, active on Facebook. So a link from Facebook won't count as much as a link from a single dedicated website. Yeah, and one thing um, I also wanted to mention for uh, for link building, <laughs> I kind of forgot the point. Um, oh, uh, for third party directories. Uh, this is something that you guys can do yourselves. Uh, you don't have to hire anybody. Uh, you can literally Google uh, top Canada directories uh, or business listings. And most of the time, the registration is free. I mean, they, they charge you more money if, uh, if you advertise. Uh, they they're kind of work as their own sort of search engine like Angie's List yeah. or whatever. Uh, and you can just go in and do it all yourself. I mean, you just fill in the information you put into your business name. You can put in a logo for a lot of them. And mm -hmm. that would count as a link. Sure, it won't be um, as good as a, a university or college, but uh, it'll be better than, you know, 100 links from Facebook, for example. Uh, that brings me to another point. One absolute must for a new website is to create an account on Google. So you need a, a Gmail address um, and then you can create a business account. It is called Google My Business. And there you can add the company name, the opening hours, uh, your logo, pictures from your shop. And this will be the basis, the foundation for being seen on Google Maps. And I'm sure there are a lot of customers if they if they're looking for directions to your shop, they'll go. They'll use Google Maps. So please, please use this free account. It's called Google My Business. And I think uh, uh, <clears throat> we'll go through Google uh, more in depth afterwards. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next slide. I still got the one question in the back of my head, and this is where should I use keywords? So we'll cover this on this slide now. Um, how do keywords work? We've mentioned that earlier. I'm going to repeat it now. If somebody's looking for a certain phrase or word, this word should be on your website. Uh, the more, the better. And this makes sure that Google puts you on the best spots on their search results page. So how can you target a certain topic or search intent? Um, you need keywords and supporting keywords on a page. Um, it's a bit abstract, so I'm going to use an example there. You've got a page about engraving wood on your website, and the main keywords that are driving traffic to your website or that are getting you customers there uh, are laser engraving wood or engraving wood or a laser engraver for wood. So this is what describes the service you offer best. Um, and supporting keywords, are keywords that are not directly linked to what the person, your customer is looking for, but they are supporting um, the topic, the, the text you provide on the website. So for our wood page, supportive keywords, supporting keywords would be balsa wood, MDF wood, elder wood, stuff like that. So the customer is not exactly looking for elder wood, probably not, um, but Google checks your texts, and if they see that you're not only talking about the engraving service, but that you're also mentioning the different types of wood or the engraving depth, stuff like that, uh, it will help them 
to understand that your website is the best match for the customers out there. And then you get a very high position, a very high ranking on Google. Um, let's do a second example to make it a bit more clear. We have it here on the slide, a page about trophy laser engraving should include uh, the keywords laser engraving trophies naturally trophies and to support these keywords you'd need to talk about awards medals um where they are used for example recognition awards or um in trophies for, for sports events stuff like that the more you write the more you go into detail the better it will be for your rankings on google which brings me now to to the question we had a few minutes ago where should you add those keywords you should add them in the URL. This is the, the address bar in the browser. What you see there, this uh, um, com or your company's name.com, this is the URL. You should add it in the browser title. This is what you can see at the very top of a browser screen. You, if you have different tabs open, every tab will include a, a small part of text. Um, this is the browser title. It's also called the title tag. When you, when you set up your website, there should always be um, a field where you can add the title tag in the web, in the software. Tom, uh, Thomas, just to, to chime in, uh, yep. a lot of, uh, like especially WordPress, I've done a lot of stuff with WordPress. Um, they have very, very nice free SEO plugins mm -hmm. that every single page, it will actually do an audit as you yep. sort of optimize the page. So if you type in, for example, trophy laser engraving, and then it'll relate back to the text. I, I can't remember the, the the plugin name. I'll find it and put oh, it in the description. Yoast. It's called Yoast. Oh, sorry. Yoast. It's yes, called exactly. Yoast with a Y at the beginning. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So that's a plugin for WordPress, and I, I'm guessing most of you guys would have a WordPress site. Uh, so you know, if you're hiring a, an SEO consultant. Uh, that's all they're going to be doing, basically. They're going to ask you, because they don't know your industry, they don't know trophy laser engravings, so they're going to ask you for you know, for relevant content. So a lot of the stuff you can actually do yourself. Once they built you a website, they show, show you uh, the content management system or, or, the, you know, or WordPress in that, in that regard. Yep. You can ask them to add the plugin, and you can do this stuff yourselves. I mean, it's yep. not... It's definitely not rocket science. I know a lot of uh, SEO companies sell it as rocket science, but it's stuff that you can do yourselves because you know the business, you know what customers might be looking for. Uh, so it, it's good to get to, to get at least a feel for it. It's, even though if you might hire an SEO company, you mm. can talk to them on the same page, and it's not going to be like them sort of lecturing you about what you need. You can tell them, okay, this is what I need for you to do. So yeah. that's that's why it's good to sort of know this stuff. Absolutely, yeah. uh, and even installing this plugin to your to WordPress, for example, it takes only two clicks. It's very simple. But have it, if you want to have an external person set it up for you, that's totally fine. You can also check uh, YouTube for certain tutorials. You'll find a lot of them there. It's not rocket science. That's the bottom line. Yeah, on uh, YouTube, there's endless, endless videos about yeah, thousands, stuff. Thousands. Um, we left off at the browser title. And then we get to the text that is visible on the page. Focus on adding the keywords to the headlines. Um, this is the most important part to, to put the keywords in. This is the part that Google will pay attention to the most. Next up will be the, the texts between the headlines, of course. And there are also some more hidden spaces like the image file names. They also matter a bit. And the links, how you call the links in the navigation menu. Uh, Thomas, I can show an example um, for, for Toronto SignMaker, for example. Uh, yeah, cool. we, typed in, we typed in Toronto SignMaker. And <clears throat> I don't want to call any company out or anything, but like, for example, uh, so for the keyword, whatever is bolded is what Google says, oh, look, uh, you know, the description, this is what's called the, the description. Uh, there is already a sign maker keyword in that description. So this is what Thomas was talking about in terms of title tags, uh, which is you can see right, you can see the tags that your competition are basically using. So they're using outdoor signs, Toronto Sign Company, banner sign, and graphic signs. So obviously don't duplicate what they're doing because that's um, Google is going to just see you as a, as a copier and won't actually give you the ranking. Uh, make sure all your, your sort of tags are your own. Uh, but for example, if you see the, the triple dots here, I mean, it's not a big difference, but in the description tags, they should be under, I can't remember the exact characters, but 
Uh, I think it's 180 characters for Google. Um, so they've most, increased it actually. They've increased it two months ago to 320 signs maximum characters. Sorry, you, you were cutting out 300 what? Yeah, 320 characters. Oh, okay, perfect. They've so, yeah, exactly. And and all the stuff you can you can Google like how how many description uh, tags sh uh, should I have, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, this is what we're talking about. And also for URL building, uh, you can see it goes directly um, to their main website. And a lot of the times, like if you see here on the yellow pages, uh, which is another great point why third-party uh, websites are important, because people can actually click on this and uh, look for you know sign makers through the yellow pages. And if you guys aren't on the yellow pages, uh, that might be an issue. Um, so you could see them using sign makers in their actual URL, but this is connected to their search term. Uh, I don't want to go deep into that, but uh, that's what you could sort of see from the competition when you're putting in keywords. Mm -hmm. Thomas, anything to add? You can go nope. back to the slide. That's perfectly okay. fine. Um, when you stick to this advice to, to put putting those keywords in the navigation menu, it will help you a lot to structure your website the way we mentioned it before. So think about your service or product product section on your website. Um, if you have a page about engraving wood, a second one about engraving trophies, you'll have a very big navigation menu, but it will help the, the visitors, your customers to find exactly this one piece of content they're looking for. So this is a great help. If you bear that advice in mind, it will help you structuring your website. Um, so we've been talking about keywords a lot in the last five minutes. How can you find the ones your customers are looking for? Uh, what makes a good keyword? It either brings a lot of traffic to your website or it is highly relevant to your customer. Um, if somebody is looking for laser engraving, this is a very vague term. But it will, if you if you optimize your texts for this keyword, it will get you a lot of traffic. But the traffic might not necessarily be be relevant. If you optimize your texts for a very long keyword like laser engraving trophies or uh, awards laser engraving, then it will get you a very specific um, type of traffic to your website. This means your keyword is very relevant to the customers looking for this service. And the best keywords get you a lot of traffic and are exactly targeted to the needs of your customers. So how can you find them? There is a very popular tool. It's a free tool from provided by Google. And it is part of the Google AdWords toolkit. You don't have to pay anything for Google AdWords. You just need to sign up for AdWords. You will immediately have access to the so-called keyword planner. In the navigation menu of Google AdWords, there is one point, it's called Tools, and in there you'll find the Keyword Planner. And in the Keyword Planner, you can filter down to your area where you're selling in. Um, you can filter down to Canada, you can filter down to single cities. Um, and then you type in some ideas you have. If you're, if you're thinking about a page about trophy engraving, Google will tell you how many people are searching for this keyword in your area, and they will also deliver a few hundred synonyms. And you should check those synonyms. Um, maybe there are additional ways of talking about the same subject and include them in your text. Before we've mentioned those exact keywords and those supporting keywords, this is um, a big, uh, how to call it, a, big, a very great source for finding these supporting keywords that are linked somehow to the main keyword you're targeting. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I just logged in and I want to show people uh, sure. Keyword Planner. It's, it's a really great tool and it's completely free. So if I, uh, if I just, you could just Google Keyword Planner and then go to the first link. You have to be logged in. Yeah. And then, uh, Start using Keyword Planner. Um, so don't let this interface here scare you. It's it's more than we need. We just need one point. It's at below the magnifier. Left already clicked it. It's find new keywords. He added. Did you already add a keyword there? Signage. Yeah, yeah. I did. Sorry, mm -hmm. just. Um, just left one sec. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
So that's what it looks like. Uh, so for example, I've used uh, fast signs, signage, uh, or the, it, it actually splits it based on your product categories. And then it'll give you uh, the best kind of keywords to search for. So Thomas, what, what would you recommend uh, for us to sort of look for? Um, you, you've just shown two things, how to search for keywords. You either can type in some keywords yourself and have Google find the traffic and synonyms, or you can add a competitor website and Google will browse the website and give you recommendations of which kind of keywords they've been using so far. But uh, we of I often use it for just, just for uh, finding new keywords and synonyms. So you've entered laser engraving signs. Uh, don't be scared by this arrow screen. Just uh, start the, the search again. It often comes up. Sometimes there are some issues with the tool, but you did everything right. Just click on get ideas several times until it works. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I have it on, under this category. I'm just going to switch it to all. Okay. There we go. Great. Um, so th there are two charts now below the graph. There's the single keyword laser engraver and next to it, it says 40,500. Could you highlight this please, Lev? Yep. So thanks, 40,500. This is the monthly search volume. This means how many people have searched for this keyword uh, in a month on average. And below this, there's a very long list of synonyms of other keywords that are somehow linked or connected to the keyword we were looking for. And this is a great inspiration for the text of your website. Not everything matches um, the, the content of your website. There are some weird combinations in there as well, uh, but you can browse through it quickly and you'll see a lot of synonyms, a lot of supporting keywords for the topics you want to cover. Yeah, so if you're a if you're a general engraver, like if you don't have a specific design making or awards, if you're just engraving sort of everything, um, and then you know you you're thinking, okay, people might search laser engraving gifts or gifts ideas. This is a great tool to get. Like if you don't have any projects in the works, this is also a nice uh, nice tool to use to get ideas. So um, the people that search for gifts or laser engraved gifts, a lot of them are are wood. I can actually uh, click on this and I can. I can split it up by um, by the monthly searches. So the most popular ones is obviously personalized gifts. So you can see number three is personalized wedding gifts. So if you're a, a general engraver, right there, you could say, okay, so a lot of people are searching for wedding gifts. Maybe I can start doing uh, separate projects for wedding gifts. So that that will give you the idea. Yeah, perfect example. Or also consider making a new page on your website uh, dedicated to wedding gifts, if you see that the traffic for this is that high. And this is a wonderful marketing tool. This is what I love about online marketing. You can measure a lot of things. And with this tool, you know how many people in your area are looking for this kind of product. If the number is high, then please make a separate new page on your website for it. It will definitely pay off. And uh, one thing I should, I, I guess we should talk about is that when you're, uh, I, I guess we already mentioned it. So when you're building out the website, if you're, if it's, you're just starting and you want to add more products to the website, don't just sort of list the products. Uh, this is what we do. Every product should have its own page. Uh, ideally, you know, at least a th I think a thousand words, Thomas would be uh, the minimum for, yeah, for every page. I would, I would yeah. go even for, for 2,000, but don't go below 1,000, please. And then when you're putting into the keywords of the text, so let's say, for example, if you're doing uh, a laser engraved wedding invitation, I mean, th those are very popular, and you're doing an entire page on, a, on laser engraving wedding invitations. So you've done your own wedding invitations. You've taken uh, the photos that you need. You might even do a small video that you're putting everything on this page and do an entire sort of description. So maybe the type of paper you used, uh, like how you came up with the design, what they're good for, uh, and then in the sort of body of the text, those like thousand, uh, minimum of a thousand words, try to use uh, the keywords into those, into that text. So if your title tag is, uh, you know, engraved or laser engraved wedding invitation, 
then you might want to use it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going a little too deep to here, but um, you might want to use it about one to two percent, what we call a keyword insertion rate. So if you have a thousand, uh, if you have a thousand words, you might want to use that keyword about what ten times or yeah, what would you say, Thomas? About Just, ten times. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, and that's don't cool. and don't overuse it. So if you're because yeah. Google will see that that you're yeah. trying to just mash a bunch of words uh, into the text. Uh, it has to be it has to be dynamic. It has to flow well. And if you again, if you use Yoast, that uh, plugin for WordPress, it will tell you how dynamic is your content. So um, it's something to be cognizant about. Uh, it's it's definitely we're going very deep into the SEO field. But if you're writing, if you're actually spending the time and energy to do that website, uh, obviously never, ever, ever copy uh, another, like from another website because Google can penalize you and uh, they'll never actually give you the same ranking as the original uh, website. But just for those keywords, um, that's what you should be doing. You should type in original content uh, with the keywords and it has to be dynamic. So yes, it takes a lot of work. Um, and one thing we should also mention is that uh, you won't see results uh, right away. I mean, you do a wedding invitation page, and a lot of the times is, oh, how come I can't see it, or my, my ranking isn't up. Uh, it usually takes, uh, Thomas, how long will it take Google to sort of, um, I guess, uh, crawl the website and, and post it and, and rank it? Uh, they will crawl it fairly fast, but uh, for you to appear on the ranking page, it can take up to three months. Yeah. So don't so expect just, to be on the Google on the first page of Google within a few weeks. You will they will they have a so-called kindergarten where they put the, the new websites into the, in a test phase because they need to make sure that your test that your website stays up and running uh, and you won't be on the results page uh, before three months have passed probably. Sometimes two months, most often three months until the website is on there. Yeah, make make yourself a schedule that okay, we're going to do a project every single week. And every single week, we're going to do a page. Uh, I understand you guys are a lot of you guys are business owners. You have businesses to run. You don't have time for this stuff. Um, and if you don't have the budget to hire somebody, I mean, if you if you have the budget, obviously hire like a recent graduate that 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 knows SEO, that knows um, if you're looking for graduates and maybe English programs from uh, from universities and colleges that can type well and and actually type a lot of text because a lot of this is typing text. All the mm. SEO stuff they can learn on their own uh, through YouTube. They don't need uh, you guys. Don't need a third-party company to, to do this all for you. You can actually uh, do it all yourself. So you can hire hire recent grads at relatively uh, low budgets. But even even if you don't have the budget for that, again, you can do partnerships with with schools and universities to get mm -hmm. uh, yeah. people so to to get a co-op student that gets uh, you know a co-op degree. They have real world experience, and then they can actually help you with the site. But I mean, you already spend you know thousands and thousands of dollars on on a laser. Why would you not spend the extra sort of time and effort to to market the website to get those customers uh, in the door? And uh, the return on investment for a website is just phenomenal. So if you consider different ads. Uh, probably on Facebook or on AdWords, please always start with a good website. It's the foundation for every ad you send out there to your customers. If you do ads and customers arrive on your website and the website doesn't look good, doesn't work properly, or doesn't provide the information they're looking for, then you're just wasting money. Please always focus on getting a good website first. Yeah. Um, we've also mentioned another tool for finding keywords, just for those of you who need it more exact, um, because the figures delivered in the keyword planner, provided in the keyword planner, are very rough figures only. Um, a very precise tool would be the Keyword Explorer from the company Moss. Um, we've added the link there, and it costs $100 per month. Uh, it would be totally sufficient to do a check of your keywords, to so search for keywords within a few days and then end the subscription before the month has passed. So you only have to pay $100. You don't need an ongoing subscription with them. Mm -hmm. But usually for the first, for the initial setup, you're, you're good to go with using the keyword planner. That's all you need. 
Um, one of the final points of the webinar, how can you optimize your website for selling? So we've been talking a lot about uh, optimization for Google, a lot about technical hints and tricks, and now is the time to optimize the keywords for your customers, so for real human beings. Um, how can you do that? Number one, I'd like to point it out again, make your contact data visible. Make it as easy as possible for your customers to contact you, to get into contact with you. Put it in your header, in the header of your website, in the footer, and make a, a neatly designed contact page. Again, use an image of yourself or of your team, of the person picking up the phone for you. Uh, put it there. This will create a lot of trust, and this will get people to get in touch with you. Second point, um, it's a marketing term. It's called call to action. For every page on your website, you should tell the customers what to do next. If they've read through all your texts, how trophies can be engraved or how invitation cards can be cut with a laser, then they're left with nothing to do. And you won't leave it up to them what the next step is. Instead, provide them with a button, um, which links probably to your contact page, provide them with a phone number, tell them what they should do next. This will make it easier for them to actually contact you. This will increase uh, the chance that they will pick up the phone and give you a call right away. Um, and typical texts for those call to action buttons are contact us, request a quote or order a sample. Whatever fits to your business, to, your, to the processes, to how you're working, um, just choose one of those texts, add a button to your website. And if somebody clicks on this button, they will get transferred to the contact form. And uh, just a quick note, uh, if you guys are more than uh, an established business, uh, if you're already a medium-sized business and you're tracking the leads through Google Analytics, for example, um, there is a, uh, actually call tracking uh, companies that, I mean, yes, they cost money, but if you're if you're only tracking the the, the, the conversions or, or the, the leads that you're getting from the form, uh, but not tracking the calls, you're only getting sort of half the, the page, uh, sorry, half the, half the view. A lot of companies might actually, I know in my previous companies, um, the local businesses would have uh, a receptionist or administrator track the calls on Excel. Sure, you could do that as well, uh, but if you're a more advanced and established business, uh, there are call tracking uh, companies out there that will do it automatically, and every time they give you a special phone number, Every time somebody, you put that phone number on the website, every time somebody calls that phone number, that kind of lead goes up and you can record those calls and, and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, that's something that uh, the, I guess the more advanced uh, and further along businesses would, would, would do. Mm -hmm. um, to underline this, I got a few statistics for you. Um, the, the point for optimizing is if, if, for example, 100 customers are visiting your website, you want to increase the number of customers who are actually contacting you. And the percentage of uh, between visitors and inquiries is called conversion rate. Uh, and on average, you can expect a conversion rate of 2 to 3%. And optimizing your website means optimizing this, this conversion rate, so the number of uh, people contacting you compared to the number of people visiting a website. Yeah. So yeah. two to three percent. This is the the percentage of people who've seen your website and who will then contact you. Just yeah. So if, if you have a hundred hundred views per month, uh, mm -hmm. you might get a two two or three of them as actual conversion, either as a form lead or as a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Think, uh, next slide. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So promoting your website. Um, we've mentioned before how link building works. Um, you should use uh, the Google My Business tool. It's completely free. You need a Gmail account and you can promote their bus your business there. And the effect of that will be that your business, your address will appear on Google Maps. This is very important for your customers. And I, I can't stress this enough, uh, guys. If the number one thing you take away from this, if you don't have a Google Google local business account, make sure you have it by the end of today because that's probably uh, for a small or up and coming business. That's the most important thing uh, to have. Even if you don't have a website necessarily, you need to have a Google uh, business listing because that will show up in Maps and that will actually start getting you leads. Uh, well 
potential leads right away. So for example, if I type in a Trotec Laser Mississauga, which is our location, oops, stepped in, is that correct? A museum, <laughs> Trotec Laser Mississauga, which is where I'm located right now. Uh, you can see it right here, and then you can add photos, videos. It's almost like its own separate website, and then you can get uh, analytics. Uh, it's it can be uh, connected to your YouTube account. It can be connected to your uh, Google Plus. I mean, if you're using Google Plus, but the number one thing is if somebody's typing a local business. So if I'm typing uh, sign maker Toronto. Again, just to use the same example, this all these map listings are uh, Google business accounts. And the the longer you're there, um, the longer you, you have a Google business account, the more likely you will appear. So as you can see, it actually appears. Uh, I don't have ads on me right now, but it, it appears ahead of the search engine results page. So the SEO, like all the marketing efforts that you're doing in SEO, the maps appear before them. So just to take that into consideration, and I, I think uh, it's very easy to set up. You just Google uh, Google local business and set it up. Uh, I'm not going to go through it because it's it's very self-explanatory. Um, it's very easy to set up, and there is also videos and 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 material about optimizing your Google uh, business to to be on top of the maps results page. And there's there's some tricks and tips on that, but. If you don't have one, definitely get one and optimize it. Put a lot of pictures. Mo like a very important, ask your customers to leave reviews on yep, your yep. Google business page. I, I can't stress that enough because yep. uh, uh, in uh, my previous companies, uh, we've had a lot of success with that uh, where we were on the map listings with about five other companies. And we had, you know, for, for each location, like for San Diego, we had uh, 26 reviews. Well, the, the guys next to it, and they were all very positive reviews, very detailed reviews, and uh, the other guys would have zero reviews or would have uh, maybe two or three. So we got a lot, lots and lots of business just from that. And again, it, it all boils down to like the, the, the trust factor, the, the fact that you know you Google Sign Maker Toronto, you see the competitors as you know no reviews or or one or two reviews, maybe some even negative reviews. And then you guys can come in at like 10, 15 reviews, and they're all very positive, very detailed. Uh, that makes a huge difference for, for your customers. Yeah. Liv, could you go back to the search yep. results page where it shows Jotic Lesa Mississauga? I'd like to oh. add something there. Yep. Uh, thanks. Um, we've been more than 90 minutes into this webinar. Um, our job is to support your business. Of course, our job is also to provide laser machines, but it doesn't end there. And I'd like to point out that Left does a brilliant job with supporting a lot of uh, businesses locally in Canada. And if you want to give us a thumbs up, that would be great on YouTube for the video. But also consider giving us a review on Google Plus, like we mentioned just before. We also need that, and it would make our life a lot easier. So if you like the video, please check out our Google My Business page and give us a review there. Whatever you think uh, may fit for, for the quality of the video and the services we're providing you with. No, that's a great point. And we actually, uh, thanks, Thomas. I set up four uh, Google business accounts uh, across Canada for each of our locations. So if you're in Ontario, please leave it for Mississauga. If you're in Quebec, uh, you can leave it for a Montreal office. Just type in Trotec Laser Montreal, uh, Trotec Laser Calgary, if you're out west. And then we have Trotec Laser uh, Vancouver or, or Langley out of uh, BC. So thanks, Thomas, for that. Of course, of course. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so let Sorry, we just lost you for a second, Thomas. Sorry, one sec. Thomas, you're still there? I don't have sound. Thomas, you're uh, you still don't have sound. 
Oh, okay. There, there you are. I'm testing a few options here. <laughs> Just okay. before the end of the presentation, this must have happened, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go back to the full screen. Yes. Sorry, guys. We're nearing okay. the end of the presentation, but I'll continue as while well, Lev is bringing the presentation back on. Um, we've been mentioning link building before. There are a lot of third party websites where you can promote your website and drive traffic back to your website from there. So here on the slide, we have Yelp, Yellow Pages, Anxious List, BBB, uh, a lot of directories and business listings where uh, an entry of your company is free. Uh, it takes five minutes to set up the profile there and you can profit from that after on infinitely, I'd say. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's, there's companies, companies like, like uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm getting feedback, Thomas. Uh, uh, there's a lot of companies like Yext that actually sell, you know, a hundred of these third-party reviews. Um, again, I don't recommend doing that. Just uh, you can do it yourself from the most popular ones, uh, and you can literally Google um, top business directories in Canada, for example, and then it'll give you like the top ten. Uh, that's all you really need. I mean, there's like, thousands of them that are very like they're not popular at all, and they're mostly used by these kind of companies to, to sell the fact that, oh, you're gonna be on a hundred different uh, third party websites. And you know a lot of the, those times, th those websites are kind of useless, uh, but that's kind of their, their selling strategy. So my suggestion is do it yourself. Uh, it's very simple. It's, it's very self-explanatory. Thomas, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, last point on this slide is social media. Uh, we also mentioned brackets, including ads. A link from your profiles on social media to a website helps. Uh, one of the questions before was, is it a big help, a big boost to the website? No, it isn't, but it doesn't cost a lot of money. It just costs a few minutes to link back to your website. And it will build a network around your website, which helps Google to find your website easier and, and to improve the status with Google. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, local companies, a lot of our clients have you know elaborate uh, sort of Facebook and and Twitter pages, which is great. I mean, I'm I'm sure that you guys can get some good leads off that. But I would say the website is should be at least 75 or 80 percent of your marketing efforts, and then social media should be like five or 10 percent in terms of online marketing efforts. I mean, YouTube yeah. is like a different uh, it's a different beast because it's not really a social media. It's more like a search engine. So mm -hmm. if you have the funds to do, the reason we do so many videos is that that's how we market, you know, Trotec because YouTube is almost like its own search engine. So if you have the capabilities and funds to do a YouTube channel, um, obviously don't just make a YouTube channel and leave it. If you do a YouTube channel, try to make at least uh, one video every week or every two weeks. Uh, it doesn't have to be super crazy professional. It could be very almost like a, a vlog, like a video blog that you guys are doing, and you could talk about different um, different products that you sell. Uh, and each video can almost work like a page on your website. So if you're, for example, if you're doing a wooden jewelry, for example, and you're you know you're an engraver that does everything, uh, but you're doing a video on wooden jewelry that can pop up in the search results on YouTube. So when people yeah. are looking for a local uh, business, they can see what you guys are doing. So that's just a quick thing on, on YouTube. But I, I understand, I recognize that it's uh, it's kind of costly and, and, and yeah. time consuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, number one priority always should be your website. Mm -hmm. Lef, do we have any slides left? Uh, we just have a competition. <laughs> so let's move on to the last slide. Um, how can you check on your competitors? How can you find out what they are doing, which kind of content, text, or keywords they are using, which types of services they are focusing on? Um, of course, look at the Google Ads. Uh, if they pay for ads, it will tell you which fields they specialize in, which kind of services. Um, look at the keywords with the keyword planner we had before. You can type in the website of your competitor and it will show you all the keywords um, that are on their website. This means the topics or text they are focusing on is a great source for inspiration. Um, Leif is just showing you something, but I don't know what. <laughs> I 
Leif, are you still there? I'm afraid he left us there for a second. He should be back on in a few seconds. Just let me check what's going on there. Okay, um, Lev mentioned to me that this could possibly happen, that his connection gets cut off, so I'll finish the presentation for today. Um, we got two more slides left. Just give me a second. There we go. We left off at the competition. Um, use the Google AdWords keyword tool we mentioned earlier to extract the text from their website as a source for inspiration. Take a look at their reviews. Some customers who might be unsatisfied will give you clues or hints what's going wrong on, on their side, on their competitors, on your competitor's side. And you might find some ideas what you can do better or, or what people are looking for. Um, sorry, sorry Thomas, we just we I got cut out because actually I signed out to show everyone the um, <laughs> the the search terms. I, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, okay. can, you, can you kind of repeat, because that wasn't live, that last point that you made, can you sort of repeat that point? Of course, of course. Um, I just carried on with the presentation and I was sharing my screen. Do you see the presentation now? Yeah. Okay. So I left off at using the, the keywords tool, for the keyword planner from Google AdWords to extract ideas, inspiration and keywords from your competitor websites. Um, on the slide, we also have take a look at their, the reviews, reviews your competitors are getting. So this will also tell you what they are good at or what they lack, things you can focus on to get customers they are losing, for example. Um, take a look at their social media profiles. There'll also be a lot of feedback from their customers in there or ideas for application and services they are currently providing, which you could also take on into your services. And finally, of course, compare their website to yours. Are they faster? Do they provide more information? Do they focus on specialized topics? For example, do they have any discounts, any, any weeks uh, centered on a specific topics? Use everything you have on this slide as a source for inspiration. Copy those things where you think that will help you uh, increase your business. No, that's a, that's a great point. Um, I would just mention, you know, you want to be obviously better than your competitors, especially in, in your local markets. If you're if you're a local engraver uh, selling to a local market, uh, look at the competition and definitely see which ways you can improve. Uh, I mean, it's very self-explanatory, but go 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 pretty detailed into the website. See see how old the website is. See how it looks compared to your website. Uh, you know, how many pages do they have? How many products are they selling? Do they have a blog? I mean, th th all those things you could look at and actually excel uh, your business. So when a customer or an end user is looking for products to engrave and they don't always obviously call the first website they see, uh, you know, you want to be that's that better approach or, or why they would trust you more, even if you might be more expensive. I mean, it's not, it doesn't always boil down to price. I mean, if you have the best equipment, like a Trotec laser, if you have a good site, if you're doing a lot of sort of uh, products that you're showing, if you're mm -hmm. trustworthy, um, the, the user would go with you at the end of the day. Okay, any questions in between left from the chat? Uh, no, no. I think just if you want to go to that last slide, uh, we're all we're all done. Uh, just uh, for more advanced marketing, uh, I mean, if you guys like this webinar, uh, definitely leave your comments after we post the video on yep. our YouTube channel uh, and let us know. I mean, let us know what um, if you'd like to improve anything or if you'd like us to do a special webinar on Google AdWords, on Google Analytics. On, uh, on social media advertising. I know you guys, a lot of you guys do that right now. Uh, and obviously, uh, YouTube advertising. Uh, so there's definitely lots and lots of uh, sort of grounds to cover. Or if you'd like us to talk about offline marketing, about what some of the things that uh, you can do offline, uh, we can do a webinar on that as well. But we feel that the most important thing uh, for, for any, you know, the base, like Thomas mentioned, is a good, strong, solid website. And online marketing through the website uh, is your best bet at, at getting those sales. Yeah. 
Okay, Thomas, if you want to uh, just uh, take off the screen share. Sure, just give me a second. Uh, I think I can. Took it off. Perfect. Okay, so um, I just want to thank uh, Thomas for taking a uh, time of his busy day. It's almost six o'clock right now in Austria. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, for being with us and, and giving all the great uh, sort of feedback. We'll post this uh, presentation on uh, on the video, so you can actually download the the presentation. Um, and then, oh, we just got a comment. I would love to see more along those lines. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely do a, a presentation uh, sometime in the future. Uh, and we'll do more webinars for you guys, not necessarily for marketing, obviously uh, very laser focused uh, webinars like we've started doing. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you again, Thomas. Do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, it has been a pleasure. Thanks uh, that I could be part of this webinar. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them uh, on YouTube below the video. Uh, we'll try to follow up the, your questions as soon as possible. So if we couldn't cover any specific topic, just let us know or contact Lev directly and uh, we'll follow up the contents as quick as possible. Awesome. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thomas. Have a good Thanks. day. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.